Hi, and welcome back, and what a beautiful Tuesday to be a part of the program. Definitely a beautiful evening. Thank you for taking a little bit out of it and spending it with us on this 16th day of May. First and foremost, I think it's not going to necessarily affect tonight's program, and I'll, I'll let you know when it does. But over the course of the next several days, between, oh, it's hard to even say, between Lacey's graduation, Andrew's eighth grade graduation, and some other big year-end events that all go along with that, I'll probably have some shortened shows or some shows that will be taped early. I'm not even quite certain how I'm going to necessarily juggle it all over the course of the next several days, but definitely some all-life important events coming up here, and not just mine, but in a lot of other families' uh, futures for the rest of this week. But tonight uh, falls into that line somewhat, not quite as much as later on in the week, of course. Andrew's graduation is Thursday night, and Lacey's not until a week from this Friday, but you get the drift. Nevertheless, a couple of breaking stories that I've been waiting on that didn't quite break today that we'll possibly have for you on tomorrow, and an event this evening that forced me to tape early so I could be a part of that. With all of that said, still a great deal to talk about. Still a lot of news coming up tomorrow. The McGough County Board of Education this evening. I'll have a camera there and some other news you'll only see here as well. And we'll have a sweet story for you this evening. When we see the when we see them come across the hood of your car or in front of it, uh, well, they're not so nice. But this picture goes uh, a long way in the opposite direction. Uh, and I'll share that story with you in just a few moments. And we'll have some other news and information as well. As far as your weather forecast, not just high pressure, but Bermuda high pressure. I guess maybe a, one of the best kinds, perhaps. Keeping us still 10 degrees above normal throughout much of your forecast. We'll mix things up late Thursday night, and then we'll see a chance of some showers. That will uh, maybe continue throughout your weekend on and off. And I'll tell you about the tweaks that have been made to your forecast in just a few moments. And two other things that we'll go ahead and jump into right now. They're not local news, but they've been weighing heavy on my mind and they've been making national headlines and one of which I know that most everyone if you've caught news anywhere in the past 24 hours or definitely this morning you've heard about the what we're all calling an overdose of caffeine for a teenager out of South Carolina now the coroner or a doctor in one of the reports that I read was uh, very careful to say an overdose because it wasn't the amount of caffeine in the teenager's body but it was the amount of time in which he ingested that caffeine in only a couple of hours uh, that ultimately caused his death as he collapsed and died just about an hour afterwards after consuming three caffeine rich drinks, an energy drink, a soda, uh, and a latte drink as well. David Allen Cripe actually passed away last month on the 27th, but we're just now really hearing about this young man's life who was taken so early, a South Carolina teenager who died just about an hour after he collapsed in his high school outside of Columbia, South Carolina. He had drank a latte from McDonald's, a large Mountain Dew, and a caffeinated energy drink, all within a time frame of less than two hours. And it's that caffeine-induced cardiac event that happened afterwards that they believe caused his death. Personally, I'm not a big fan of those energy drinks. Red Bull never got the taste, never really enjoyed the taste of any of them. I am guilty of traveling sometimes, long hours, refueling and picking up one of those five-hour energy shots at the counter. But for kids, it's a different story. It's very commonplace. It's almost a part of culture, if you will, to have a cool energy drink. But it has proven deadly, and this is not the first time, and we hope it will be, but sadly it probably won't be the last. Nevertheless, doctors say that Davis, Davis died from a caffeine-induced cardiac event, causing a probable arrhythmia. The teenager was said to be healthy. The autopsy showed no sign of any existing undiagnosed heart condition. The coroner wanted to stress, as I said, that this shouldn't be a caffeine overdose, per se. They're not saying it was a total amount of caffeine in his system. It was just that it was a lot of caffeine brought into his system in a short period of time. Davis Wade, seen here with his dad, about 195 pounds and would not have been considered morbidly obese. And they even stressed that he may have gone unharmed by the same amount of caffeine had he ingested it on another day, and certainly at a slower pace. Energy drinks can have as much as 10, or as little as 10, and as much as 500 milligrams of caffeine in one drink. And the FDA says that about 400 milligrams a day is the max amount of caffeine that anyone should have. That's about four cups of coffee. A five-hour energy drink? 
230 milligrams of caffeine. A 20 ounce Mountain Dew, about 90 milligrams. Many 16 ounce energy drinks, 240 milligrams, but some, as I said, even much more than that. The latte, like Young Davis consumed, about 140 milligrams. So his parents and others are hoping that, at the very least, his passing will result in the rest of us parents being more cautious about what our kids are drinking and putting into their bodies. This next report, not so much of a report, but maybe more of an opinion, uh, however you want to phrase it or deem it. I just wanted to put this out there as uh, my oldest is in Washington, D.C. with her senior class. When she gets back, uh, I'll make sure that this is not something that she has partaken in. But a lot of a lot of emphasis on distracted driving as of late, maybe even more than ever. Uh, and I think there's going to be some folks who are going to be talking to us about that sometime in the, the near future and maybe in form of a campaign or something of that nature. Nevertheless, uh, in just a few moments time last night, sitting around the dinner table, um, my family was able to show me within just a matter of a few moments, five or six young people, uh, for example, using them as an examples who had posted to Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat, uh, them driving, whether it was taking a video of themselves driving to share with another individual, uh, them talking, singing, whatever, I was astounded as to the frequency of it uh, and how easy it was to find just in our short conversation uh, that number of young people who were doing so. Uh, and I just wanted to put that word of caution out to all of us parents uh, to maybe investigate a little further uh, their phones, their devices, and make sure that none of our children, myself included, uh, are guilty of that very dangerous, dangerous habit. Uh, but indeed, it was out there and, and quite frequent, and I was just quite surprised, to be quite honest. With all of that said, I've got local headlines and a really cute story about a really tiny animal coming up in just a second. To get high-speed internet on their state-of-the-art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions, or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality, or stay connected with family and friends with 24-7 telephone service you can always depend on, contact Foothills Broadband today. Or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. A lot of our young people were at Kings Island yesterday, the eighth grade trip from the middle school at Kings Island, and it went off without a hitch, I'm glad to say, for a very tired boy who returned home to my house late last night. It was actually, though, just after they had left the park that a power surge stranded some riders at Kings Island, and I'm so glad for the timing uh, with that matter and issue that it didn't happen uh, when our kids were there, but officials with the park uh, said rides were all closed for a temporary basis at least last night, sometime around 7, 7.30 or so as a precaution. A power surge occurred outside the park property and they had to shut the rides down just as a precaution and several individuals had to be young and old, had to be uh, escorted and helped off of roller coasters and other rides and walked them down to safety. The park was scheduled to close and did at 8 o'clock anyway, so it was a good timing, good time of the day, but certainly not something you ever want to happen regardless of when it is or whatever reason that it is. So here's one for you. This is uh, just a chance meeting over the course of the weekend that turned into a story this evening uh, with a couple of folks who wanted to remain anonymous and who were meeting a Department of Fish and Wildlife officer in downtown Salyersville, specifically Officer Griffey with the Kentucky Department of Fish and wildlife. They were there to um, make a change or handoff, if you will, of a creature found orphaned after its mother was killed. Officer Griffey with the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife. It's a name that you've heard on the program. I have read it in regards to several arrests and investigation that he's been a part of. But tonight it was just a chance encounter over the course of the weekend that led to this video in which his department had been contacted about an orphaned baby deer. Which after he picked up will be headed to a foster home or a foster farm, if you will, where it will be cared for until it is able to thrive and survive on its own. They'll get it, uh, start feeding it on its goat meal, and they'll stay in the house with them until, uh, you know, it gets uh, a whole lot bigger than this. Um, and then once it gets where it can be released, you'll release it back into the wild. 
Everybody thinks we kill them when we kill them, we don't. Only way we kill them if, if, they, if they can't survive. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, there's sometimes we have to. Because we, you know, we ain't going to sit there and have anything suffer. He's young. I wouldn't put him much past that little, maybe a week, a week and a half at the most, if you want to know the truth. She said it still had a little piece yeah. of milk. I'd, I'd say at the most, a uh, week and a half. Now, I have to say that intervening or meddling or messing with wildlife is illegal and, of course, highly discouraged at the same time. But in this case, in which someone saw the little animal's mother killed by a car, well, he was glad that they called. He says deer will often take their little ones to a safe location while they go feed and then return for them later. And sometimes that safe location might be beside a busy road or next to a populated area because they don't think any natural predators are going to come and threaten them in that environment. More to talk about in a moment. Right now, a look at tonight's McGoffin County Farm Bureau Community Calendar. I've got a couple of birthday wishes. I just don't have them typed in on the screen, but just in, and it's certainly important. We like birthdays. Birthdays are a big deal around here. And so is the same thinking of these individuals who called in to wish a happy 15th birthday to Dalton Bailey. Dalton Muffin Bailey celebrating his 15th birthday today. And a whole lot of love from your mom and from Jeremiah and Scott and Kaylee. A happy 15th birthday to you, Dalton. And... Phyllis Mullins, I am told by your daughter, by a whole lot of other family and friends, celebrating your 69th today. So happy 15th to Dalton Muffin Bailey and celebrating her 69th birthday today, Phyllis Mullins. Happy, happy birthday to you both. One last reminder about tomorrow's Community Substance Abuse Awareness Education event at the Health Department, a regional prevention center and UNITE uh, organization event also sponsored by the McGoffin County Health Department. Tomorrow at 1, this, of course, is free, and they hope that as much of the public will join them. That is the need tomorrow. And starting this Thursday, the McGoffin County Tire Collection, you can take old tires. That, of course, doesn't include uh, companies or garages or scrap yards and can't take tires on the rim. But Thursday from 8 until 4, Friday from 8 until 4, and Saturday 8 until noon, down next to Rumkey, there by the horse park. You can take those old tires, discard them for free. If you have any questions, call 349-2313 or Solid Waste Coordinator uh, Frankie call it at 496-6179. I just got word today that North McGoffin Elementary has a special site-based meeting set for tomorrow at 430 in the school's conference room. The meeting open to the public and everyone is invited and welcome to attend. That's North McGoffin's special site base tomorrow at 430. And a change to the Harold Whitaker Middle School site based decision making council that was set for today. It is to be held this Thursday at 3 o'clock in the school's conference room. The public, too, invited and encouraged to attend. And a big reminder about a big reunion, the biggest of ever, the second annual all-class reunion for the Sayersville High School, May the 27th at North McGoffin Elementary, starts till 3, lasts till well into the night at 1030. And this is free. They've got dinner, a DJ, casual dress, attire, uh, just a great time for anyone who ever went to the Sayersville High School for a part of a year, all year, all of your years. It doesn't matter. And for birthdays or for announcements like you just heard for your church or club or organization, what have you, mail them, email them, Facebook, phone fax, drop them off here at the studio. Any way you can get them to me, just get them to me. We'll tell everyone about them. doesn't cost anything. Just a service we have always for many, many years. And for as long as we're here, we'll continue to provide to everyone who chooses to use it. With that said, I'm out of announcements. And I've got a few words from a few of our sponsors next. One other request, let them know you're watching every chance you get. I'll be right back. On tomorrow's program right now, I plan on, among other stories that we have on tap for you, bringing you up to date on all the local baseball and softball scores and schedules and teams as all the seasons are quickly winding down. Just a quick update right now on our Hornets, and specifically our Lady Hornets, which were on the road last night. No change for the Hornets. Uh, nothing happening there, not anything happening until this Friday when they're at Powell County for one of two, and they're both road games left on the regular season schedule. Uh, their last game back on the 6th, you know, senior trip, and, of course, 
some torrential rainfall, you know, and kind of slowed up the end of the regular season. But the boys right now sitting at 12 and 5, 4 and 2 in the district. And of course, they play once again. Uh, we know Paintsville in the 57th district opener for the boys at Central on next Tuesday at 7:30 in game 2. So while there's not a whole lot happening in the regular season for the boys, uh, district tournament action is just around the corner. We'll be there, of course, and have highlights for you. The ladies are another story. They've still got a few more games, and that's some good news. The bad news is uh, they dropped one last night on the road at Elliott County. Yeah, they came home five runs short, two to seven last night. That drops the girls to eight and ten. They're still one and one in the district, and of course we already went through that. The district seedings were basically a blind draw uh, between the 57th district teams. They are at Breathitt County tomorrow night at six o'clock, and they'll be off, or they'll be back at home rather. I'm sorry, at Breathitt tomorrow night, then back at home Thursday night hosting Perry Central, hosting Belfry the following night hosting Pike Central and Not Central, both in a doubleheader on this Saturday. So a lot happening for the Lady Hornets. And they, once again, as I told you earlier, well, late last week, I guess it was, they're playing Sheldon Clark in the first round of the 57th District Tournament on Monday of next week at 7 o'clock. So tonight's show, short and taped early, so I could make it to Andrew's 8th grade formal, which was tonight, one of those uh, – you know, end of the school year events. He's eighth grade and Lacey graduating. So I got to make sure I catch it as much as that as possible because I, well, you know how it is, right? Be gone before you know it. So tonight, a 60 degree low. I'm still holding on to 89 degrees here at the newsroom at five o'clock or so. Uh, 60 for the nighttime low under clear skies. Patchy fog is about all you're going to see tonight. Tomorrow, the 80s make a return. This Bermuda high pressure from the National Weather Service. Putting us back into the upper 80s tomorrow. More sunshine, more clear skies, more 60s for nighttime lows. Ditto for your Thursday. You will notice a slight bump in the road Thursday night. That comes as we do have a bit of a change up. We're talking a 20% chance of showers, but not until 2 a.m. Friday morning. So now through Thursday, high, hot, and dry. Friday is not going to be a washout, and we're still going to see a little sun, but partly sunny, 82 degrees on your Friday. But you can also add in a 40% chance of showers early, mid, and late Friday. And for your weekend, Saturday as well, pretty much the same. 84, low 60s, nighttime lows, partly sunny skies, and, yeah, a continued 40% chance of showers and storms. Sunday, pretty much a likelihood of showers and storms. Temperatures back down to the low 80s, 59 degrees for nighttime lows. Clouds and showers likely on your Sunday. Monday of next week, we'll start off on a 73-degree note, a bit cooler. So the McGoffa County Board of Education meeting tonight to be on tomorrow's program and a couple, at least one possibly, uh, breaking report that we're following. We'll have it when it happens and we'll have some other news that you'll only find here on your news today. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday evening and we hope to see you back here tomorrow night. Good night.